Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to a ridiculous video. And this is my new 86 inch TV, which is insane and awesome at the same time. So last month, LG, they reached out to me and they said, could you fit an 86 inch TV in your room? And I thought to myself, probably not, it's too big, I don't need it. It'll probably look terrible anyway. However, how cool would it be to try and to use it for gaming and watching movies? And do you know what? It's turned out to be one of the best TVs I've ever had. So this is the 2020 Nano 91, and this is the 86 inch Nanocell TV from LG, and it's massive. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a TV this big before other than a projector. So I've actually been using it over the last few weeks for movies, gaming, and streaming, and it's absolutely awesome. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some PS4 gaming on it, along with next-gen compatibility, movies, Netflix, picture quality, reflections, and a few other bits as well. So if you stick around until the end, we can cover it all. The first thing that you'll notice is this TV is massive, and I know I keep saying that, but it really is. Now, when I first set it up, I actually thought it just looked too big, almost stupidly big. But after using it daily, I very quickly got used to it. In fact, as my TV unit and speakers are quite big anyway, it almost looks well balanced rather than looking totally out of proportion. But the shelving to the side, just to give you an idea, that's two meters tall. Um, so you can really see just how high this TV goes. So it measures 76 inches wide by 46 inches tall. That's with the stand on and it weighs in at 55 kilos. So I needed to make sure that my stand could easily support that. The problem with the TV this big is no photos or videos really justifies how large it is. So every photo that I've taken and I've sent it on to mates, it just looks like a normal TV unless you see it in person. So what I've done here is I've actually placed some random items that I've got around the house in front of the TV to hopefully give you a better idea of just how big it is. And it's only now comparing it to say a, a can of Coke or a bottle, you can see that it's massive. Now there are actually a few different versions available in the Nanocell range, but this is the latest and the most expensive 4K version that they've got. And this comes in at, at the moment it's on sale at three and a half thousand pounds or around $5,000. So that's a lot of money, but that's also a lot of inches. So is it worth it? So it's no good having a massive screen if the quality or the picture quality is terrible, but this TV does not disappoint. So it's got a 4K IPS panel and it's using the nanocell technology and it does an awesome job of showing pure colors which looks vibrant and not washed out at all. So I've tested out a few different 4K sources over the last few weeks, whether that's YouTube, Netflix shows, and the quality is always really, really impressive. So this model has full array local dimming. Now that means it's not edge lit and it's able to manage the black levels and the contrast really, really well. And it's perfect for dark scenes in movies and gaming. So I was actually expecting the image quality to be quite washed out, I'll be honest, coming from an OLED. But with the right settings, I found that the picture quality is actually incredible. Anything that I've watched on it looks great and it's so, so smooth as well. I'm seriously impressed considering the size. This TV also has Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos support, as well as HDR10 and HLG Pro. So as I watch a lot of Netflix content, it's awesome to see that so many shows and movies already support these formats. And this usually pops up with an icon at the top right when you first start the movie. So my seating position is about 10 feet from the screen, so that's pretty close, but it's enough to appreciate the quality without being able to see every pixel on the screen. Now I game on my TV, I've never been a desk or a monitor gamer at all, so the picture quality, input lag, and response time have always been a key point for me when choosing a TV. Now I'm no competitive gamer, but I don't want a laggy experience when playing online. But believe it or not, this massive 86 inch TV actually ticks all the boxes when it comes to gaming on the TV. In fact, it's actually next gen ready for the Xbox Series X and a PS5. So it's got a feature built in called ALLM or Auto Low Latency Mode. Now this means that when I'm playing games, it ensures that I'm gonna get an almost lag free experience. And to be honest, the games that I've been playing over the last few weeks, I've seen no lag at all. Just remember that if you are using this TV or any TV really to game on, make sure that you're always using the game mode. This will turn off a load of the extra features and settings that you don't need, and it will ensure that you've got a better gaming experience. It's also compatible for gaming at 4K at 120 hertz. So I can't test this today, unfortunately, because I don't have a console that's capable of that. But again, the next gen consoles do, so it will be perfect for this. Then there's AMD FreeSync, and that helps with less tearing and stuttering during gameplay. And then it's also got HDR Gamer Mode, also known as HGIG. So if you're playing any games, whether that's on the PlayStation or the Xbox that support this, it's definitely the mode that you want enabled as it'll make HDR look so much better. And finally, it's also got a variable refresh rate. 
So although it is just a TV and you think it would only be aimed at say movies and watching normal TV, it's definitely catered towards gaming too, especially with all of these extra features. Obviously at the time of filming this, I only had the PS4 Pro to test it on. So I'm not really getting to see the full potential of what this TV can do. But from what I've seen so far, it looks incredible day and night. And I can only imagine how good it will look on the next gen consoles. But I don't just use this TV for gaming, I watch a lot of movies on this as well. So the fact that it feels like I've got my own cinema now in my living room is insane. These past few weeks we have sat down and watched so many films as a family during the day or during the night as a date night. Every film that we've streamed on it, whether it be Amazon Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, they've all looked great. The colours always look spot on and the contrast in blacks are really, really impressive. That full array local dimming definitely helps. Now during evening viewing, I've had to reduce the brightness though as it's so, so bright which is actually a great point. The brightness on this TV is incredible, to the point where it will burn your eyes if you have it too bright. But then again, that's also great for a light room. So if you need it in a conservatory or in your living room, if it's got so many windows, you'll have no issues at all with this. And then onto the viewing angles, actually. So the viewing angles on this TV are insane, to the point that it doesn't matter where in the room that you're viewing it, the colors and the contrast are almost perfect. They don't change at all. And this isn't something I was expecting, if I'm honest. So when I came into this, I actually expected it to be kind of as bad as some of my previous LED TVs that I've had. But honestly, whether you're watching it straight on or to the side, you'll have no issues watching this. So if my seating was off to one side in this room, as opposed to straight ahead, I'd have no issues. Then looking at the reflection on this screen, which considering the size isn't bad at all. Obviously every TV has reflections, but this one kind of has a, like a semi-matte or anti-glare coating, I guess as it looks far less reflective than my other TVs. But if you view it at an angle where it reflects on say a lamp or a window, you'll obviously see it because it is clearly a big black screen. But this TV is perfect for lighter rooms, you'll have no issues with that. Plus it's so bright when it's switched on that again, you won't even see the reflections. One great thing about this TV though, or any recent LG over the last few years, is the app store and the UI. So across the bottom of the TV, you've got these awesome apps. You've got like an app launcher where you can scan through and view any of the installed apps you've got. So for example, I've got Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, BBC, YouTube, and a few others as well. But there is an app store as well. So you can download other apps. So for example, Spotify, Plex, Disney Plus, and loads more. And my personal opinion though, is that LG's UI is one of, if not the best across all of the TVs out there. It's just so easy to use and it looks great. So around the back of the TV, we've got three USB 2.0 ports. We've got two HDMI 2.0 ports. We've got two HDMI 2.1 ports, which that means they're ready for next-gen gaming. We've got an optical port. We've got a 3.5 mil jack, and we've got the network ethernet port as well. Now, one of the HDMI ports are also eARC ready. So that means that it will allow you to share the audio from your TV into say an AV receiver or an amp, for example. So I've always used ARC. But this new format is even better, in fact it's 37 times more bandwidth when compared to the previous version. So this TV supports Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant and Apple AirPlay. So if you want to share your iPhone, iPad or Mac screen to the TV, it's dead easy, you just share it straight from the device. Now I've done this a few times in the past where you're say sharing photos or videos or what's on your screen straight to the TV with no requirement for a third party dongle or app. And the fact that it supports Amazon Alexa and Google means you can obviously integrate it into your current smart home. One thing to note though about the stand is, although once it's installed it is pretty solid, it's not going to go anywhere, the TV does have a lot of wobble, so the slightest of movement and it will wobble. Now, I was pretty nervous at first when I installed it because I could see that it's such a small stand which is holding a 50 kilo TV, so just, just kind of be wary of that. Now looking at the remote, so I've been using the Magic Remotes for the last few years on different TVs and it makes navigating the TV so much easier. So if you've not seen one of these by now, it's basically a mouse pointer on the screen. So you can use the remote and you kind of wave the wand around the screen and you allow you to choose some of the menus and the settings and the apps and so on. So I know this TV is too big. I mean, I've been using it for the last few weeks. I'm under no illusion that it's not out of proportion to the rest of the room. Now what I actually did was when I first installed it, I sent a couple of videos and I sent a couple of photos off to my mates. And I want to get their opinion on it really, because they're obviously mates who have been around my house before, they know the size of the room, they know if it's out of proportion, and this is what one of them had to say. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could see this in person. <laughs> so, awesome. Um, that's the kind of comments I was hoping to get from my mates, to be honest. And what do you think? What do you think to the size of this TV? And in all seriousness, if you had a TV this size, so if you had an 86-inch TV in your living room, what would you use it for? Would you use it for gaming or movies? And if you watched it for movies, um, what recommendations could you drop in the comments for me? So drop a few suggestions in of a movie that I should definitely watch on this TV. 
So obviously a few weeks back when I first received it and set it up, my first impressions were it's just too big. There's no way I'm going to keep it. But honestly, as time has gone on, I've really enjoyed it. I've really got used to it. So other than it being massive and kind of maybe looking a little bit too big for the room, there aren't really any downsides, especially for the price. The 55 inch that I've still got on the wall behind the TV will probably look too small now. So I definitely can't go back to that one. It's just a shame that during these current times, I can't invite my mates round for a movie night, but there's always next year. Well, you've just made it to the end of this video, so thank you. Thank you for spending your time watching my video, and I always appreciate it. So if you drop a big TV in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up, and I know who have obviously made it this far in. Also, if you've got any questions or suggestions for a new video, drop them in the comments as well. And now if you missed my new TV setup tour that I did a couple of weeks ago, then you can check that out on my channel as well. And basically, I knocked down my chimney and my fireplace to build the setup that you can see today. Well, I hope this video was useful to you. Please don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.